Now the time is up for our third speaker. It's Jim Sims. He has been a Toastmaster since October 1997, when he joined Easy Speakers Toastmasters in District 46 in New York City. Over these 24 years, Jim has been an area governor, new club chair, club coach, and club mentor. He currently serves as vice president of public relations of the youngest and funnest club in District 48. I guess you know that. Jim has been retired since July 31st, 2013. In May of that year, Jim and his wife, Tina, saw a play in Penelope Park entitled Ain't Retirement Grand. It was written and produced by a local playwright, Jill Pearlworth, a 93-year-old resident of Gulfport. The play has some 22 songs and a lot of food of thought as Jim contemplated his retirement. Jim thinks that if you, if adulthood is a myth, then so is retirement. Tonight, in his speech, he will share some lessons learned. One second, and I will share with you. So I give you Jim Sims, Ain't Retirement Grand Ridiculous. Ain't Retirement Grand Ridiculous, Jim Sims. Ain't Retirement Grand Redux. I am revisiting it eight years later. Retirement is the only time in your life when time no longer equals money. It's hard to believe that it was nearly eight years ago, it'll be eight years, July 31st of this year, that I made that decision to retire. I remember the conversation I was having with my wife, Tina, in April of that year. She said, the Pope retired, what's the matter with you? And indeed, Pope Benedict had announced his retirement in February of that year. I hadn't given a whole lot of forethought to making a decision to retire. We didn't have a grand plan in what are we going to do when that time comes. I was 66. My wife had just turned 65 on March 24th of that year. So she no longer needed my employee health care in order to be covered. She was going to become a Medicare person. So I announced my retirement and then three months later, I actually did it. We were fortunate that I was able to have a 401 while, when I worked for NatWest. At one time, the bank matched 150% of what you put in. I ended up with a nice nest egg, wasn't a big plan. At one time, I remember my wife, we had a discussion and she thought that the money in my checking account was like a cell and it was hidden behind there and she had no control of it. But lo and behold, when it was time to retire, it was nice having that nest day. So that year we went to the venue theater, which is in Pinellas Park. It's in a strip mall. It seats about 45 or 50 people. And we went to see this show, Ain't That Grand. And it's about two older couples that are in their 60s, mid 60s and they're making that decision to retire. And there's a really terrific song in the second act. There's 22 songs in the play. And Gil Curl is the writer and the producer. And he even played the piano the day that we were there. And he's a 93-year-old living in Gulfport. But in that second act, there's a couple thinking, what happens if we both die? What's going to happen? And they thought about their kids getting the inheritance and sitting together with the lawyer in the room, reading that last will and testament. And they sang, we shared it all on ourselves, you're heck out of luck. We shared it all on ourselves, you're shit out of luck. And they it was kind of a reflection and I'm thinking, you know what, my son Brian and my daughter-in-law Karen, they'll probably do okay because that 
money has more or less re remained a nest egg, hasn't really diminished, even though we tapped into it, because we're very fortunate. Financial advisor, Paul Kuzma. Paul was originally with Bank of America when I first moved to Florida. Now he's with Morgan Stanley. And what Paul is so capable of doing is he balances that lovable bear, my wife, and that dynamite bull, me, and he's able to juxtapose and make sure that we have investments that satisfy both of us. But when I look back on it, I don't know about you, but I didn't have too many role models. Like, how do you retire? How do you retire well? I remember my dad. My dad died two weeks before his 66th birthday. Also happened to be two weeks before my son Brian was born. He had glioblastoma, the brain cancer that killed President, killed Senators Ted Kennedy, John McCain, and President Joe Biden's son. And so it is a it's a really devastating uh, cancer. My mom worked for the Social Security Administration after we graduated high school. She was uh, involved in the Social Security Administration, rose through the ranks and was doing fairly well. But I remember we she announced that she was having a party and she was leaving. What had happened is she started to decompensate, started making a lot of mistakes. So I remember my brothers, Richie and Fred, we went to Jamaica where the office of the Social Security Administration was, and we had this party. We called it retirement, but looking back on it, I realized it was really a very, very sad time. And I wish that my mom had uh, been able to travel around the world and spend her money and leave us with just a buck. But uh, we divided her estate when she passed away in 1998. So I'm thinking, what are the things that I've learned in these eight years? And I would say that there's been a few of them. First, make sure that you keep the candle of romance burning. Say that I love you. Make sure that you each are responsible for your own happiness. Have your own friends. Those of you who know me, who have been here with me for the last 10 years or so, you might have heard of Tina. But you've never seen her. You have never seen my wife at a Toastmaster meeting. Every once in a while, she'll come to a Christmas party, but she said, that's your thing. Likewise, you have never seen me at Dunkin' Donuts with Tina and Noreen when they get together on Thursday. And I can assure you back in New York, when she went to the ballet every month, I never set foot in the ballet. <laughs> Will Durant, famous historian, who wrote at, the, wrote at the age of 90, the love we have in our youth is superficial compared to the love that an old man feels for his old wife. Make younger friends. This is really important. Study done by the University of Michigan in 1998 showed that people who had social connections, they were going to live longer. I don't think they were thinking of my 2,800 Facebook friends, but if I've asked you to be a Facebook friend, it's really only that I, so that I can stay forever young. Health and exercise are critically important. Mark Twain said, always be careful when reading books about health, otherwise you might die from a misprint. <laughs> and I had a number of things that have happened since that grand decision to retire. In February of 2021, they hadn't fallen out, but I had all my upper teeth removed, thanks to Dr. Skilly. I still blame Dr. Paul Moore, my, my dentist, who decided to retire. I thought one more time he could cement that bridge in, but no, it wasn't to be. And then in January of this year, I went to my cardiologist, and I had a routine nuclear stress test. I'm not sure you can have a routine nuclear stress test, but, but I had one, and it showed something a little unusual. So I had to go into the Pep and Heart Center, and lo and behold, they discovered a 90% blockage of the circumflex artery. And to this day, I try to say to my cardiologist, I am an elite athlete inside the body of a fat guy. <laughs> he, does, he doesn't necessarily agree with that. I believe that if you want to be successful in retirement, embrace life not money. People who work to improve the world, or at least a little corner of it, seem to maintain a sense of vitality that is missing in those who are intensely self-absorbed. And I can tell you, buying stuff isn't what my wife and I do when it comes to our birthdays. We didn't have a big list in her, at her birthday in March or my birthday in February.
Volunteer, I think, is essential, volunteering. It's about giving back, and I think it empowers you. I've been a volunteer with Meals on Wheels. My wife and I both deliver on Tuesdays at, at uh, River of Life Church. I've even encouraged Don and John Morse to, to join me. They have their own groups, but Meals on Wheels is a dynamic local nonprofit making a difference in people's lives. Since 2009, every year I climb the Bank of America Tower in downtown Manhattan, New York, no, downtown Tampa. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm re resurrecting New York. No, it's, uh, it's Tampa, and it's only 60 stories. The, the uh, Empire State Building where I worked was a lot taller. But it's to raise money for the American Lung Association. It's been an important part of my volunteer activities. And certainly, my psyche is linked to Toastmasters. Some of you know that I'm also a member of the oldest and most prestigious club, Tampa 1810. And recently I joined the Bob Terrell Sandwich Evaluators. Look inward, engage in social, in soul searching. You need to ask, is the inner me well prepared to lead a good last one third of my life? Retirement success is about living fully. So some of the things that I've done over these eight years is I really intensely involved umpire in baseball. 1992 is when my college roommate and good friend Jay, who passed away last year, said, Bull, we were called the baby bulls. He said, Bull, you love baseball. Why don't you become an umpire? And lo and behold, I did. So I haven't been blessed with grandchildren, but it keeps me close to the game and keeps me close to kids. I work out at the YMCA. When I was diagnosed with prostate cancer in 2006, I decided to ratchet up the exercise. So I'm in spin class two or three times a week, and it's really, really powerful. And delivering Meals on Wheels uh, with my wife is just another part of what I consider a special thing. I don't have any rules for your retirement. I would say, I would say that give it some thought. Hopefully, you'll have something, and you'll have someone to share it with. And I would just say that the lesson isn't that retirement is the end of work. It's the beginning of doing the things you never knew you loved, as well as those you always loved, such as spending time to live with the love of your old wife. Don't tell her I said she was old. <laughs> okay. Well, Toastmasters, Jim Sims. One thing I love about Jim Sims is his cadence. He speaks a little fast, but he pauses in just the right spot. There's a certain comfort level when you retired, when you, when you well, not retired, but when you, when you left 1810. Every so often, I'd have to follow him. It's like, where is he now? Because I need to hear his cadence. There's just, just a very comforting voice, uh, and, and just I love your delivery. I like your use of the Toastmaster to get across an awful lot of information about your speech, about what you're going to be talking about. So that it, it went from an, instead of a 12 to 15 minute speech, it was only an eight to 10 minute speech. I use that a lot. It's a great tool uh, that you may want to use that one day as you're sitting there writing away and you realize that you've got 1400 words on a five minute speech and you, you just, oh, well, I'll let the Toastmaster tell about this part. And it saves a lot of time. It's a great trick and I use it a lot. Uh, retirement is a myth. You jump right into it. You said, uh, that retirement was a myth. My mother even often said she was never so busy as the day after she retired. You talked about being an umpire, spin classes, uh, meals on wheels. You have a plethora of, of volunteering and and uh, climbing stairs for no apparent reason. I mean, it's a great it's a great cause. But for somebody like me with bad knees, it's, why are you climbing sixty? But it's it's wonderful. It's great. Um, it, it's. Uh, a few points, uh, perhaps uh, you, you may reconsider. Uh, now, again, this, this was a volunteer, voluntold almost speech. Uh, Jim had about 48 hours to prepare for this, I know, because I was also asked to prepare for one of these. And it, it's like, no thanks. <laughs> so, uh, so it, but you could, you had a lot of information out there. You, you used a lot of dates. You had uh, when you retired. Uh, your wife's birthday, you had the date of your father's, you had places that you worked and several different places that you worked in, and all of this within uh, even the venue of, of the uh, the theater that you went to. How many seats are in the venue there? 45 to 50. And this is great because now I want to go to this theater that I never knew existed. The, the venue is it? Uh, the venue theater out in, in Pinellas Park. 
<clears throat> and uh, but so just kind of you might have lost you might have been able to shave off about a minute or so with, with some of this. Uh, but back to what I really loved was your lessons for us to learn in retirement that uh, fortunately for you, you didn't have, you know, you weren't working with for GM where they wiped out your 401k, you still have one. So suddenly time doesn't, doesn't uh, equal money any longer. But you talk about being interdependent from your wife. Now, how often have we heard about couples that are so on top of each other that when one spouse dies within 12 months, the other spouse goes too. There's nothing more important than finding your own likes and dislikes to have some sort of growth outside of the partnership because at some point, not everybody dies in the same plane crash, and that's just very valuable. So in, in summation, I love every speech you've ever given, and that's just, that's great, John. It was great. <laughs> <God knows. laughs> Thank you. <laughs>